For the year 2008, Gibson decided the Guitar of the Week series of 2007 was a little bit too ambitious. Let's scale it back and do 12 models, one for each month. We're going to learn about those today. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. All right, Guitar of the Month, abbreviated as GOTM, G-O-T-M. Each of these models were produced at a maximum of 1,000 times, all ink stamped on the backside of the headstock what number they were, and they all came with a special case that read Gibson USA and Guitar of the Month 2008, with a case shroud that reads the same, and they have a very nice crushed white interior with a premium handle that's bolted onto the case. But let's go ahead and dive into the first one, February. The original SG Diablo, initially being sold for $3,249. This particular model SG is very unique in the fact that it features a carved top. Most of them just look like this. They've got a flat body, you've got some sort of a cherry stain, sometimes you get black if you're an Iomi fan. But as far as I'm aware, this is the model that started the craze of the weird carved top SGs. It kind of ends up getting an hourglass figure and a giant belly right here. This design later influenced other Gibson models such as the Zoot Suit SGs, which I've documented one of every single color, so all you have to do is search it up on YouTube if you're interested. But not only were these carved tops, they were also carved backs. Now it's kind of hard to see in this particular photo, but these are actually a little bit concave, but you have this very nice glossy red finish. It definitely lives up to the name SG Diablo. But besides just the body being kind of weird, these actually have 24 frets, a full two octave scale, which makes them different from other SGs. And hey, they have a matching headstock with the Gibson silkscreen logo and a unique SG brass truss rod cover. This is certainly one of the most memorable Guitar of the Month guitars. However, what makes it different from later SG Diablos like the Premium Plus tops is the fact that the top is actually mahogany and you have a rosewood fretboard on these. And they feature Burstbucker Pro 1 and Pro 2 pickups. Next up in March, we get the 50-year commemorative Flying V, originally retailing at $3,499. I have reviewed and demoed a modified one of these, but what makes these fascinating is they have a little bit of a 58 Flying V stance as far as the neck goes and the way the body's carved. They're a little bit wider set, so it's not like the 67 styles that you're used to seeing. We don't have any pickguard on here. We've got a modified layout, but look at the edges of the body. They're slightly sculpted in, kind of like an 80s V2, but not exactly the same. It's just a little bit of a ledge to make the guitar a little bit more comfortable to play. But then things get really crazy when you get to the headstock. So apparently this is an old Gibson logo that Ted McCarty designed but never necessarily used. So you've got a V shape in the headstock that's in a red perloid material and then the unique Gibson logo. But you might be wondering, hey, what's going on with our tuners? We don't have anything sticking out the side. Those are Steinberger gearless tuners. So they look like this at the back. These were very new at this particular point in time. So those are a 40 to 1 ratio tuner, and they are indeed locking. And then other awesome elements are the brass 50th truss rod cover, and it's an ebony fretboard with Super 400 inlays. These are some very fancy flying Vs, but they're not necessarily for everybody because the specs are a little bit quirky. From the AA maple top with the back being made of mahogany, and they were originally loaded with 57 classic humbuckers. Continuing on for the month of April is the Les Paul LP295 Gold Top at a staggering $4,399. This guitar right here takes a normal Les Paul and an ES295 and blends all the elements. What is not to love? It features a sweet gold top finish with a floral designed pick guard just like the ES295s. But look, we get the sharp Florentine cutaway over here. Now that's not the only Les Paul to receive the sharp pointy cutaway. Check out the Les Paul Florentine that we've documented on the show before, but it came stock with a Bigsby on top of all that. You know, just for good measure, to give you the whole arch top vibes. But then if you look at your inlays, you have your split parallelograms. There are very, very, very few Gibson Les Paul models that feature those. The only other one I can think of is the Les Paul Long Scale. But that's a topic for another day. But then we jump over to the headstock, we have classic antique appointments. We learned about those in the Guitar of the Week series. It's where you have a bound headstock on a Les Paul that features a crown on the center instead of the Les Paul model silkscreen or something similar. As far as the back goes, it's a pretty standard Les Paul, all mahogany with a maple top. It has a rosewood fretboard and came stock with 57 classic humbuckers. May brings an ambitious model called the Les Paul Push Tone. 
You can see one of these in action in my review and demo. However, this was a take on getting the old Les Paul demo models that they used to send out to the top selling dealers. You can find standards and customs in these variations where Gibson would have like 13 different sets of pickups that people could try out in store to help them sell things or find a model that is voiced the way they want it. So this was Gibson's attempt to take that to a mass scale and put it in this limited production of 1000 of these units. So you're going to notice some interesting things here. Like it's a beautiful flight maple top. It's a straight up ebony fretboard, but where things really get interesting are these inlays. They're made out of wood. No pick guard, no pickup rings. And the reason why they can get away with not having the pickup rings is they have a whole plug and play system right here. Basically, it's a whole apparatus here that you can use the whole quick connect system and put them in the new apparatus to do whatever combination of pickups you want. Unfortunately, these only came with two sets of pickups, the set of P94 pickups and the Burst Buckers, Rhythm and Lead Pro. But these also come stock with a locking Neutrik jack and locking Grover tuners. And as far as their headstock goes, it's kind of like a Les Paul standard. You do get the Gibson Mother of Pearl inlay. At the end of the day, these are very similar to the Les Paul Studio Premium Plus guitars. However, you get the more standard like headstock and a few other premium features. But now things are starting to get really crazy for June. The Shred X Explorer, originally selling for $3,499. All right, I'll be honest. I'm the guitar of the week, guitar of the month lover. And I didn't even know this one existed. <laughs> <laughs> Not until I was laying everything out. Okay, so this is like an 80s style Explorer. You can see they have the whole triangle layout with your toggle switch right here. You don't have any pick guard or anything like that. So not too much in that aspect has changed, but they've equipped these with Kalers, which was a thing that Gibson did do to guitars back in the 80s, and it was a very popular modification. But if that wasn't enough, we also have EMG pickup stock. This is just like one for somebody who wants to emulate the 80s in his purest form. Probably somebody who's a Metallica fan. But it's a nice slick black finish, completely blacked out vibe. It doesn't appear we even got the Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. I don't know what they were thinking there, but you do have the ebony fretboard and it appears to be a full gloss finish. And they made it easy for you to change your nine volt batteries. Let's just say if Gibson tried to release that today for 3,500, yeah, I, I don't even think they would sell now. July starts to get creative. We have the introduction of the new Longhorn Double Cut, $3,439. We've got this. It's not really a Les Paul Double Cut. It's not really that similar to an SG. It's just its own thing. Kind of like a PRSified Les Paul Double Cut, I guess you could say. So it has three ply binding around the top, which is normally something you don't find on Gibson electric guitars, more so on their electric Spanish models. But you've got an interesting ebony fretboard with Honestly, I don't think those have ever been used on anything else. Now you could say it kind of looks like the block inlays of a 335 or like the 70s SGs. However, these are just rectangles, very squared off. They start to get squished the further up you get to the neck, but those are definitely unique within the first five frets at least. But then check out our headstock, multiply bound this time and we get the flower pot logo. But obviously the elephant in the room is you've got the EMG pickup stock in here. But hey, what if I told you there's one more hidden secret underneath our bridge? It actually has a built-in piezo system. That's why we've got these special saddles right here. It's an under saddle system. So you can get some acoustic tones out of this thing too. Well, simulated acoustic tones and you can also blend them. That's why you've got two output jacks down here. This is one of those models that, yeah, I definitely need to review and demo it one of these days. Now let's continue on to August, the Shred V, the sister to the Shred X. This one was also listed in stores at $3,499. So this has a very similar vibe to that last one. It's got the EMG 8185 pickup set. It's got the stock Kaler, kind of going after the whole 80s flying V vibe, but the layout is kind of strange because this is what an 80s flying V's layout looks like. I don't know where they borrowed that one from. <laughs> But it's got the unbound ebony fretboard, everything's blacked out. Honestly, I would say this one pulls off the look better than the Explorer. So if you're a shredder, that one might be a must have. However, again, it's probably not the most popular Gibson guitar ever made. But now for September is perhaps the most hated guitar of the month guitar that just doesn't get a lot of love at all. This is the Reverse Explorer. During the Guitar of the Week series, Gibson did the whole Reverse Flying V. That actually was so ironically crazy that people ended up really loving and enjoying them, despite being really hated online, to the point where Gibson actually did follow-up runs after that. This is an example of when they're like, hey, well, if we can do that to the V, let's do it to the Explorer. And Gibson didn't do any more runs of these. <laughs> what makes it unique is it's, it's a 
reverse explorer body. Okay, we've got a weird lightning bolt going for our pick guard, which you know, honestly, it's kind of fascinating because you've got your control right there, which is great for volume swells. Either pick up, assuming these are both the volumes and that's a master tone, but you've got your output jack right here on the front. Kind of a strange choice, but okay. Gold hardware. And then you have the interesting pickups going on here, which are apparently just regular 57 classics, but they have the cool powder coating to them. But they have an unbound rosewood fretboard with a carbon fiber inlay at the 12th and 5th fret for some strange reason. And then the elephant in the room, the headstock. We've got the return of the gearless Steinberger tuners, but the only reason they use those is because they really could not do anything else in order to do this headstock. It kind of reminds me of like the Gumby style Modern headstocks, but you've got the tuners kind of staggered in the middle instead of on the edges. Apparently this was another Ted McCarty design that just never got used. And you also see the return of that Gibson logo. You've got this giant truss rod cover on it, but yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those guitars. For example, this one has sat for three years at 2500 bucks, which is not bad for a limited edition guitar and only one offer in that time. And we're on the back stretch now, October, the 50 year commemorative Explorer. Originally retailing at three and a half thousand dollars, it's a partner pair to that flying V. It borrows all the same elements, two piece flame maple top, the whole brimstone burst going on. You've got the gold hardware, no pick guard, but with additional contoured edges that just make it look different. I guess this time we could compare it to an E2, but again, very different things, but there's very few explorers out there that have an arm contour on the front, but you also have it right here on this sharp point. This one also has a 50th brass truss rod cover with the Steinberger tuners, but strangely enough, only a Gibson silkscreen for the logo. But those tuners look pretty good on an Explorer style guitar. But I think I failed to mention last time, these actually came stock with gold fret wire to go with their Super 400 inlays and ebony fretboard. These Explorers are semi what popular. So we've seen some things get paired up in this episode, like Shred X, Shred V, 50th Flying V, 50th Explorer. You've got some pairs, but these next two are just kind of cop outs in my opinion. November sees the $3,439 Longhorn Double Cut, except for this time, it's like a cherry sunburst color. So while you will see a whole bunch of listings claiming there's only a thousand of these made, what, what they really mean is there's only 1,000 in that particular color. On a technical sense, there are 2,000 Longhorns out there. So this one one features all the same stuff, EMG active pickups, you've got your piezo system. This is just for somebody who wants a little bit more of a traditional color. In my opinion, I think the blue one pulls it off best because, I mean, this is a crazy guitar. It's not Gibson's normal stuff. You might as well have an out there exotic finish. But this one definitely pulls off that wood grain on the back a little bit better. And then in December, we have the return of the SG Diablo for 3249 So when I was first getting into guitars, I just thought the SG Diablo was a thing and it came in two different finishes. No, these are technically different models. And I did not even realize this until I was laying this episode out. It appears that the silver one is actually a satin finish instead of a gloss. And I say that because look right here, you can see all this mahogany wood grain going on. That also helps prove to us that it's the mahogany top instead of the maple, like the later ones had. But yeah, these silver ones look honestly kind of bad <laughs> in like real life photos. But I'm sure it's also kind of cool at the same time, kind of like the whole TV finish going on. But they definitely skimped out, but charged you the exact same as the initial Diablo run. Now, the truss rod cover on this particular one is not stock. It should look like this. But it does have a matching headstock just like our red friend. And it's numbered just like everything else, but this one has a black stamp. So there you go. If you need something a little bit less demonic, you can try this one out. Now you might be saying, hey, December, we're done, right? No, did you notice I missed January? They didn't start this until February. So technically Guitar of the Month 2008, just like Guitar of the Week where they accidentally skipped a week and they took the holidays off. This one's no exception. There is technically a January 2009 in the 2008 Guitar of the Month series. And it's one of the cooler ones. The Holy V for 2,799. It's a flying V with holes cut out of it. Just one pickup, that's a 57 classic. You just have one volume control for the whole thing. You don't get any tones, but it's a fascinating guitar at the same time because I like that whole V shape that they've got going on here. It matches with the guitar's body and you get a bound ebony fretboard, a split parallelograms. You don't see those on too many models, but what makes this even cooler is they, they cut a V out of the headstock even too. <laughs> I mean, they called it the holy V for a reason. There's a whole bunch of holes here and you get the Steinberger gearless tuners. 
But yes, these holes are directly through the guitar. You can technically play the guitar from the back if you really want to. And later on, Gibson actually did do a Holy Explorer, but it's not technically part of the Guitar of the Month series. So that wraps up tonight's video. If you watched this because you were trying to get some information on your guitar, and you need to know how much it's worth in today's market, please feel free to book a private help session on my website, troglisguitarshow.com, and I'll be more than happy to take a look at the current market for you. Also, I'm in a market for one of each of these in excellent condition at a fair price, because I would like to build a complete Guitar of the Month and Guitar of the Week set for my future guitar museum. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.